Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gail Morgan welcoming you to the Libertarian Counterpoint's Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. You've heard their point, now listen to the counterpoint. Welcome to the Knuckleheads of Liberty podcast. Now we're coming at you on March 31st, 2021, a little over two months into the Biden administration. And we got his first press conference to talk about. Literally after two months, he's finally uh, braved questions from the uh, friendly press uh, out there. But uh, before we get into any of that, let me introduce you to our panel. In our upper left-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett, pilot in the state of California. And in our upper right-hand corner, we have Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty. He is a retired engineer in the state of California. <clears throat> and my name is Jason McPhee, and I'll be your host today. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Biden finally braved <clears throat> questions from the press. Uh, so he did a press conference about a week ago, I believe, and uh, it was a pretty friendly event for the most part. Uh, you know, we even had... Uh, some of the press telling him how wonderful uh, they thought he was, <laughs> or at least that they assumed it. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, he, he, there was a lot of problematic things. And, of course, he, he didn't get to any of the, I guess, unfriendly press. There are no questions from Fox uh, or mm -hmm. anybody else who might be skeptical at all uh, of him. Um, and, and surprisingly, though, from the friendly press, there were a few um, – there were a few – maybe uh, slightly tough questions and, and maybe that's just reflective of actual tough times on some uh on some end so uh before we jump into any of the specifics do you guys have any takeaways from that uh, uh that biden press conference well i i thought they asked a, a few you know pointed questions that uh, put him on the spot um and so he just didn't answer usually or <laughs> rambled a little bit uh and uh the the one thing I don't think we're going to cover it, but uh, just, you know, his his constant slip up. So one, one thing is regarding getting out of Afghanistan. And he uh, he said, if we get out of Af Afghanistan during his reply and then later on, somebody nudged him or something because he, he spoke up is so, oh, we're going to get out of Afghanistan for sure. And he made it very loud and he reiterated it like somebody, you know, nudged him underneath the table and and slipped him a note that says, you can't tell them if we get out of Afghanistan, you got to make it clear we're going to for sure. And uh, so anyway, I just noticed that as an aside, I guess. Anyway, what do you think, Leon? Well, um after looking at that press conference, I can see why he was hiding for the last two months. I can see why he was hiding throughout the campaign. I still can't believe this man is president of the United States. I'm having a real problem with that. I mean, listen, I didn't agree with any of Barack Obama's policies, okay? But I can see why he was president of the United States. At least I can see some semblance of something that says yes he could he could occupy the the yeah. the, um, the 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 oval office but mm -hmm. when i look at joe biden i mean God, crying out loud this man beat an incumbent president really did that really happen i yeah. must be dreaming seriously i must be dreaming <laughs> yeah and of course that. and of course to, to that to make matters worse we have the press there fawning over this man yeah. The man is frail, he's in cognitive decline, and the press is telling us how wonderful he is. This is <laughs> unbelievable. So I don't know what to make of this. Something well, is wrong here, really he's, wrong. He's a Democrat. You can, if the Democrats put up a, a chimpanzee, they would fawn all over him just the same. It just doesn't <laughs> matter. Uh, but I will but I will agree that uh, Obama was... Um, very likable, uh, likable fella, I thought. And, uh, yes. you know, very, a, a good speaker, a, a yes. good, uh, you know, um, could think on his feet and, and that kind of thing. So, so yeah, um, you know, and uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, well, speaking <laughs> of thinking guy. on his feet, too, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, uh, Obama certainly 
uh, seemed to be a fairly effective speaker, if nothing else. So no one was ever going to mm-hmm. um, accuse him of just sort of drifting off in the middle of a question. Exactly. exactly. In fact, it is going to go a little out of order of some of the things we were going to address. But, um, you know, Tim, uh, it, you know, one of the things he actually did is he he had a question related to the filibuster. And he kind of filibustered himself during the thing. I mean, he just sort of started going on and on about the filibuster and it started making no sense. And then pretty soon he just kind of drifted off <laughs> and then lost in space. Did you want to give us that quote, Tim? Uh- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I'm, I'm going to, you know, for, for the sake of avoiding any, any kind of, uh, litigation, you know, with, uh, with a violation of, uh, any kind of copyright laws, I'm going to impersonate Joe Biden. Okay. So, uh, and this is the one about the, uh, see, I'm already having issues. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I got to get into character. Yeah. So first thing, okay. So first we'll, thing we'll, we'll got, adjust our te- uh, yeah. we'll adjust our telegraph to make sure everything's working well. Yeah. For you. That's right. <laughs> and we'll get All the right. phonograph working well for the audio. <laughs> let, let me get my teleprompter going here. Also, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You need that. I you need that the teleprompter. So the filibuster. Uh, let's see. I think it's this one. Yeah. The there it is. Okay. So we're ready, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and just to be clear, too, he was asked a question about the filibuster, and he was saying, you know, well, why don't you guys, uh, you know, uh, yeah, push for the filibuster? He was asked a couple times by a few different reporters. This was uh, after, I, I don't remember which reporter asked this particular time, but go. <laughs> All right, here we go. But here's the deal. As you observed, I'm a fairly practical guy. I want to get things done. I want to get them done, consistent with what we promised the American people. And in order to do that in a 50-50 Senate, we've got to get to the place where I get 50 votes so that the Vice President of the United States can break the tie, or I get 51 votes without her. And so I'm going to say something outrageous. I have never been particularly poor at calculating how to get things done in the United States Senate. So the best way to get something done, if you you hold near and dear to what you like to be able to, anyway. (laughs) And then it was nap time. (laughs) (laughs) Mr. President, I'm waiting for the outrageous thing that you're going to say. I mean, where where is it? I'm waiting. (laughs) Yeah, it was I think it was anyway. I yeah. think that was the outrageous part. I don't yeah, well, you just you just kind of drifted off, you know. And then, <laughs> you, you know, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's anyway. the best way to get something done if you hold near and dear. And anyway. yeah, if you hold near and dear to what you like to be able to. Anyway. <laughs> And we, we've got to, you know, this is up where we're, we're sure until Kamala replaces him, which could be any day. I mean, in yeah, all yeah. honesty, but until she replaces him, we're going to have plenty to talk about about Biden. Yeah. So, so uh, Tim is going to be our go-to, our go-to yeah, Biden. I just, I just want, I just want Mr. President to know. I just want Mr. President to know that I'm scared to death because he has the nuclear codes. Okay, I don't know if we'll yeah. get up one morning. And from that he nuked Canada or somebody like that. I'm really scared about that. Yeah, maybe you'll see all that snow up there, and you'll see it so white. He'll assume it's racist land, and he needs to attack it. Nuclear right. weapon. Yeah. It's a goodbye, Canada. Yeah, too, much, yes, too much, too much whiteness on the ground in Canada. He's gonna get rid of it. I'm really, I'm really worried about it. <laughs> He's going to wake them up in Canada. Huh? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that, that was okay. What else we got here before? I, I mean, I'm kind of getting a little bit constricted here. <laughs> well, you know, one of the this was I thought the most shocking thing in the whole uh, press conference, and it came down to um, uh, let's see. What was it? Uh, it came. It came down to a question of Does Biden know what it even means to be transparent? And um, let's see. So in this particular 
question. It was Kristen Welker of NBC asked him a question. It was about the border crisis. And she wanted to get in there and get pictures of, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the bad conditions that all these kids that we're having from the, uh, the rush of kids who are, are showing up at the border. <clears throat> and she wanted to get in there and, and actually get some, some live tape of things. And so she said, uh, how soon will journalists be able to have access to the facilities? We've obviously been allowed to be inside one, but we haven't seen the facilities in which children are packed together uh, to really give <laughs> the American people a chance to see that. Will you commit to transparency on this issue, Mr. President? Mr. President. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> pardon me, uh, Christian, or was it Kirsten? Kirsten, yeah. uh, I will commit to transparency. And as soon as I am in a position to be able to implement what we are doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, to, to me, I mean, that's an absolutely shocking statement. I mean, it, 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 does he not understand that transparency means uh, what is the government doing today? Not when exactly. he thinks he's getting things right. It's what yeah. is it, what is it doing today? And <laughs> and she's asking, can they get in there? And, and we had this ridiculous thing where Ted Cruz uh -huh. was down at the border recently, and he was trying to get some images of these kids packed in cages, you know, yes. living, you know, essentially shoulder to shoulder in those yeah. uh, uh, conditions. And they had a woman, I guess, work there, and a she literally was, was, was a some Democratic operative who was who apparently works for the Biden oh. administration. Okay, okay, so yes. so it wasn't actually a, a a border employee. Then it was it was just a, a person who worked for the Biden administration. Okay, yes. uh, regardless, she she kept jumping in front of his camera and telling him that uh, we have to treat them with compassion, and you can't, you know, that yes. this isn't a zoo. You can't take pictures, and. They're treating them like they're innocent <laughs> and she doesn't want them to take any pictures. And she kept jumping in front of his camera. And so this question from Kirsten Welker was trying to get at that. When can we get in and see this? And he said, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm all about transparency. When I'm ready, I'll let you in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the hypocrisy, the hypocrisy yeah. here is so nauseating. Throughout the, throughout the, um, the, the, the Trump administration, we kept hearing constantly about kids in cages. How inhumane kids in cages. We even had AOC going down there and she's saying how the border agents told the kids to go drink out of the toilet or some kind of nonsense like that, which was which never happened. But she claimed that on national TV. Now, now that Biden now, of course, this problem, now that the, the people are walking across the border in droves. Oh no, 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 no. We can't see that. We cannot see all the all the compassion that these Democrats are showing them. We can't see the compassion. We can't see any of that. No, we just have to take our word for it. We are working on it. And as soon as we have got it done, then you'll have all the transparency we need. <laughs> we don't need transparency tomorrow or next week or next year. We need it now. We want to see these kids in cages that you like to talk about so much. We really want to see that. This is, this is nauseating, it really is. Yeah, I, I like the part where he accused uh, his predecessor of starving the kids by leaving them at the border and let them starve, yes. which yes. never happened. <laughs> Nobody starved to death. And but uh, but he, yeah. Trump was the only president in history to let those uh, kids starve to death. And and that oh my god, um, the uh, the guy just. I mean, I, I haven't checked on it, but in the past, when he was vice president and Obama was president, did Obama send him? Or put him in charge of of uh, improving uh, the the water and the roads in a foreign country with American taxpayer money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he was he was talking like that's what they did because you know his his and he wants to do it now. Okay, so people are coming up from Honduras. Okay, it, it's got the it's got one of the highest murder rates in in the world. In the world, it, yes. It, yeah, and uh, I have a personal friend that was born and raised in Honduras. And so uh, anyway, he's uh, talking about sending uh, taxpayer money down there to fix things up so that it's not so uh, so bad down there. So, uh, you know, is that is that really a 
what the United States uh, <laughs> public wants to do so that they won't want to come up here. You know, he's he's claiming that it's not because I said, hey, send your kids up here. We'll let them stay. It's not that. No, of course not that. Uh, it's, it's because it's always happens during January, February and March and uh, the cold time of the year. Right. And when they 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 want to travel up here and uh, <laughs> and we're going to go fix all these countries that are sending their kids down here or up here so that so that we can uh, prevent them from wanting to. It's really not because I told them, hey, come on up. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll let them stay. Well, aside from the idea that we need to go in there and sort of micromanage other people's countries, how about we just stop ruining them with policies like yeah. the war on drugs and such like that? Yes, I mean, right. that are yes. literally well, creating these yeah. disparities of, of, of you know, corruptible people when the, the income is fairly low in those countries, the, the uh, money to be made in the black market on transporting these drugs is relatively high for people. In these right, countries. Yes. So you get a lot of corruption in these countries. And I mean, that's, and that's really a, 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 one of the consequences of our war on drugs. Why don't we end the government distortion before we decide we need to throw in yet more government distortion? We don't even have the money. I mean, literally we're just <laughs> printing money at this point. Oh yeah. So it's just, it, it's rather alarming. Um, but the issue, but, but the side issue to all of this, though, the side issue to all of this is that it's the lawlessness that they want us to accept, though. Okay, fine. The, it's true, the government is doing some, some pretty bad things in terms of the war on drugs and all that kind of stuff and things like that. But now they want us to accept the lawlessness. Okay, people are walking across our borders. Oh, they are migrants. We have to feel sorry for them. Oh, <laughs> they should be able to walk across the border. They should be able to show up on our. On our, on our shores and just say, here I am, I should have right. <laughs> well, fine, I'm an immigrant too. So should I walk So should I walk up to the border of Oregon and tell them I don't have to be obey stupid laws? I'm an immigrant. Have some compassion on me. But this is the kind of thing, they want us to accept lawlessness. They want to say certain lawlessness is okay and, and certain lawlessness is not. And this is, this, is, this, is, this is horrible for our society. This is true societal cannibalism, where we begin to eat ourselves in the, in the name of some vision that these people, this utopia, they want to take us to. We will never get there, of course, but we will be all dead by then, I, I suppose. And by the way, any of you listening, if you steal our term that we have copyrighted, societal cannibalism, <laughs> we're coming after you. We're coming yeah, after you. There we go. We're get you. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Actually, we haven't copyrighted it yet, Tim. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you wasn't supposed to say that, Jason. You wasn't supposed to say um, that. <laughs> hey, we're coming after you, you guys. Anyway, <laughs> yes. You know. Yeah, we're claiming that for the knuckleheads of liberty, we That's claim right. societal cannibalism as our own. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it may go against our libertarian leanings not to have things copyrighted that are, <laughs> you know, just like terms, you know, that you, you throw out there like societal cannibalism, you know, yes. but, but I mean, even though it may go against our grain a little bit, we're coming after you. Coming after That's right. Yes. yes. You know, I'm, I'm surprised that Biden has not, uh, you know, that he hasn't uh, copyrighted Come on, man. <laughs> I don't know of any other politician who that's their yeah. fallback position on everything. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Hey, hey Biden, you got to give us one. Yeah, get, get, our, our Biden uh, stand in, Tim, you got to give us a come on, man. Come that's on, right. Man. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> get oh, get your act right, Tim. Get your act right. <laughs> yeah, you know, I. I I have, I'm operating a, with a bit of a handicap since I don't normally watch him. I mean, it's like, I, know, I don't go out of my way. And so last, you know, last couple of hours, I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, he does, he's pretty deadpan, really. I mean, he's just, he's pretty serious. He's not very exciting unless he starts talking about his, his exploits and beating up corn pop in his pocket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah he, gets, he gets a rise out of that for sure. I'm thinking, Taking Trump, taking Trump behind the gym and beating him up too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, aside uh, to getting back to the press conference, so there was at least one other thing I wanted to get uh, uh, to before we uh, run out of time. But there was, uh, you know, I, I, I really do feel that that whole transparency issue, though, uh, of, of, of him literally telling a press person that 
transparency. We're transparent. When when we're ready, we'll let you in. That's transparency for him. Yes. And the fact that the press didn't push back on that. I mean, that's incredible <laughs> that, you know, we didn't have a whole bunch of reporters. I mean, well, what, what's happened to the press? Uh, I mean, well, we know what's happened. They become a wing of the Democrat Party. But I mean, we, we really need a press that, that uh, you know, gives uh, a transparent eye to the American people on what's going on with government. I mean, that's their job. And <laughs> I mean, the idea that they've just really become uh, you know, a, an arm of the Democrat Party at this point is really disturbing. And it should be disturbing to anybody who's watching the idea that that's Biden's answer for transparency. And the fact that the press doesn't push back on that is just absolutely astounding. So. I mean, it's, it's just, I mean, it's shocking, but it's not surprising. I mean, this has been going on for, for God knows how long. If, it, if, it, if, um, if, it, if, it, if it's a Democrat in, in power, we're gonna phone all over him. Look at look at Obama. Obama, I mean, Obama had the best the best I've ever seen in my time here in the United States. But if, look at George Bush. Look at Ronald Reagan. Look at Donald Trump. Look at look at their their adversarial relationship they had with with Republicans versus their phoning relationship they have with with, with with Democrats. But this this is a real problem. Okay, this is a road to fascism because the press. Is now becoming an arm of the government. That's what is happening here. And, now, and, and related, well, I, I was just going to say, Leon, related to that, because just so we don't have time to get right back to it, but uh, j uh, to cement what you're just saying, uh, one of the uh, press reporters in that pretty much gave an advocacy uh, position during uh, the press conference, which was just amazing. Uh, PBS's Yamich uh, Alcindor, uh, she said, when they were talking about the filibuster, and this is exactly what she said. She said, when it comes to the filibuster, immigration is a big issue, of course, related to the filibuster. But there's also Republicans who are passing bill after bill trying to restrict voting rights. Chuck Schumer's calling it uh, an existential threat to democracy. Why not back a filibuster rule that at least gets uh, around issues, including voting rights or immigration. So she's literally characterizing what the Republicans are doing when they're exactly. trying to get security at the at the polls is what how Republicans would characterize it. And she's characterizing it as restricting voting rights. And then she's saying, this is what you should be doing to get around that, which is yes. just insane. I mean, this is literally a question from a reporter from PBS, public broadcasting. You're paying for some of that. Yes, yes. Viewer. All tax dollars. This is all tax dollars at work. Yeah, uh, yeah, Leon, you can go back. I just didn't want to miss out on that because I no, thought no, that I know, was... I know, uh, I know, I know. It's fine, it's fine. But this is journalistic malpractice. This is journalistic malpractice. When you have when you have journalists becoming an arm of the government, we on the road to fascism. That's where we're going right now, really. We're on the road to fascism. Yeah. Well, what's shocking to me is that people still watch all these things. Uh, mainstream media, uh, People actually watch that is seriously uh, got to have a screw loose now. Um, the the people in uh, the USSR uh, never believed anything that the government told them. At, at least they had all, you know, come to the conclusion they just lie constantly. As you know, why you know so so it, it just became a constant joke in the Soviet Union. Uh, about that, that, you know, that no one believes on anything they say anyway. So, you know, doesn't matter what they say. Um, so it's getting that way here with the mainstream media. And, and you know, it's, I mean, I've long ago given up watching that kind of nonsense. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, I'd be dumb as a rock, uh, dumber than I am, uh, for sure, if I kept watching that stuff. Plus, I'd be filled with fear, too. Knucklehead noise patrol. I think I feel. It, I think I better button up here. Yes, I think you better. <laughs> That's the sound of our knucklehead noise patrol coming in. Um, and uh, yeah, so speaking of dumb as a rock, <laughs> we are right back to Biden again. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, in this particular uh, uh, case, you know, what, what we try and do with the uh, knucklehead noise patrol, by the way, is we try and hit on something that some politician or media personality has said that's just kind of kind of crazy or, or dumb or anything like that. So uh, the, the, this particular ca uh, case, Biden seems to be getting pretty comfortable in saying that he's the number two behind Kamala. <laughs> this is the second time he's he's uh, 
uh, been caught doing this. This was a few weeks ago, uh, and he was, uh, I, I guess, being asked a question about vaccines. Uh, so take it away, Biden. <laughs> Now, when President Harris and I took a virtual tour of a vaccination center in Arizona not long ago, one of the nurses on that, on that tour, injecting people, giving vaccinations, said that each shot was like administering a dose of hope. Okay. Mr. Mr. President, did you mean to say President Harris? I'm a little confused. Wake up, wake up, Biden. I'm a little confused, sir, please. Did you mean to say President Harris? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Did President Harris become president last, last night? And I missed it in the news. Yeah, yeah. Apparently so. Well, I, guys, I think he's just more You guys say that. You guys say that like it's a bad thing, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's coming. <laughs> well... Well, I don't know. I, I don't know, sir. I don't know, sir, if, it, if, if it's a good or a bad thing, quite frankly, you know. I mean, I know we have some serious problems with Mr. Cognitive Decline, your your obvious cognitive decline, yeah. but I don't know if Kamala going to be any better. With, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have a whole, you know, we're going to, it's just going to be constant. And uh, people are really going to start thinking that the us libertarians are just, you know, part of the arm of the, of the Republican Party. We're going to be... <laughs> You know, put into that situation is like, uh, you know, every once in a while, we're going to have to wake up some libertarian based concepts here somewhere and yeah. uh, and express those uh, anyway. Uh, but I mean, that's kind of uh, what's going on right now, at least with the government. And uh, so maybe there'll be time for libertarian principles, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see here. Well, Tim, I, I think that's a really the good point, though, is because, I, you know, part of the problem is, is that the assault from the left on liberty has been yes. so constant and, yes. and extreme over the last oh, yeah. few years. I mean, yeah. lockdowns of healthy people, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, uh, destroying businesses and only wanting to hand out money based on race to repair the yes. damage that's done. I, yes. I mean, the, these are, are just absolutely catastrophic things that the divisive and uh, it's just uh, terrible policies that the Democrats have been pushing. So I guess if it seems like we're just, you know, I guess really extremely going against Biden, I, it's just I, yeah. I can't think of a worse enemy that we've had of liberty. In <laughs> but yeah, but this is but this is your point, though, Jason. All of these things, all of these things that we talk about for the most part are really and truly attacks on liberty, attacks on free speech uh, on free speech. Freedom of mobility, freedom of assembly, all of these things are tax on liberty. Maybe we don't articulate that clearly enough, and maybe we should. But the whole idea is, is what we are getting to here is these are constant attacks on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's what's going on here. Yeah. And, and sadly, that's about all the time we have for our show today. But yes, uh, you know, uh, hopefully we will be able to keep up the fight and uh, you'll be able to keep going too and to keep liberty alive because this administration is not a friend of liberty uh we'll see you at the next one thanks for joining us thank you for listening to the knuckleheads of liberty podcast a production of libertarian counterpoint 